Hey guys, what's going on? Hope y'all doing good out there today. Uh, welcome back to the channel. Much appreciated you taking a little bit of time out of your day to check the video out. And today what I'm going to start doing a little bit, man, I've been getting a pile of requests from subscribers, you know, to do uh, different video topics on. And I'm going to start trying to include, you know, three or four a week of the subscriber questions in there, along with just some other stuff I want to pass along. And today we've got a good one for you from one of the subscribers yesterday, uh, talking about they wanted to know what is the best uh, retrieves to use on a lipless crankbait. That's a great question because there's a lot of different retrieves that you can use on that. So we'll cover that today. So anyway, just a couple of housekeeping tips before we get started here. Um, like I said, if, uh, tomorrow night, Johnny, uh, tomorrow night, Johnny and I have our weekly live podcast, Fish the Moment Live. Check that out. Um, if you guys are interested in our next virtual seminar with Fish the Moment, um, Johnny and I are putting on a natural man, or excuse me, a natural lake. Uh, seminar on July 22nd, Thursday. We're going to be covering largemouth, smallmouth, and all the northern tier state lakes up there. And again, just a weekly reminder on my own channel if you guys are interested in becoming members of the channel, it's a great and you know, interested in supporting the channel a little bit further, uh, you can go to the about section of my main page or you can click on the little tab on my home page and just click intuitive memberships and it gives you different options get extra videos every week that aren't seen by the public. Uh, some's got access to my personal email for your own fishing questions and uh, appreciate that. Like I said, it's a great way to, su to support the channel. And finally, just uh, if you haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. That'd be much appreciated. So, okay, got that all, all that stuff out of the way. Let's get into this lipless crankbait deal. So lipless crankbaits, man, again, I, I like to give a history a little bit about the baits I talk about before I talk about them. Lipless baits have been around forever, you know, at least, well, over 50 years. I remember back when I was a little bitty kid, dad would take me down trolling for white bass down at uh, Grand Lake up in the Elk River Arm, and we, we'd use these things called swimming minnows, and they were lipless crankbaits. Some people called them bio boogies. The ones we used were a swimming minnow. It was a lipless crankbait. Um, I don't have any of them, but I'm sure you can probably Google that and see it. And then you got, as the years went on, you got hot spots, rattle traps, and now every company out there has got a lipless crankbait. And the, the, the basic premise of a lipless crankbait is all the same. It's a, it's a narrow bodied lure. You know, this is the Mega Bass Vibration X here. Looks like a shad, um, tight wobble, designed to do the same thing, to imitate a shad. They're all narrow bodied baits that looks like a thread fin shad for the most part depending upon the size. You know, you can get them up to one ounce that look like big gizzard shad. Just tons of them out there. I mean, it's just overwhelming. There's so many different ones out there. But specifically, what I want to talk today about is your retrieve to use on these things. And there's a lot of different elements as far as lipless crankbaits we'll get into in later videos, but specifically the retrieve. So anyway, my lipless crankbaits, the retrieves that I use on them, are pretty much the same for all sizes. This is a three quarter ounce model right here, which is a smaller three quarter ounce model, Vibration X. Um, but it doesn't matter if you're using a quarter ounce, half ounce, one ounce, it's pretty much the same. I basically have a handful of retrieves that I use it. The first retrieve that I use um, is the, just the basically just, just a fast retrieve for one, a medium fast straight retrieve. This is the standard retrieve for lipless crankbaits and a lot of the retrieves you use guys it depends on the depth that you want to attain and the type of cover you're fishing it around lipless crankbaits are famous to be famous for fishing around submergent vegetation and down south in florida anywhere you have grass and those straight fairly fast retrieves work really good once you count it down to the depth that you want to fish and that's the big key about lipless crankbaits is they're a countdown bait and you need to count them down uh, in that, you know, water column zone that you feel the fish are at. But, but for the, for, I'm going to guess half the time of the year, I find that just a fast, medium fast retrieve, maybe stop and go a little bit, is one of the best ways to trigger strikes with a lipless crankbait because it's a reaction bait. You're, you're not, you're not using the lipless crankbait to generate strikes from a visual perspective, although there is a small element of that. For the most part, you're trying to capitalize on that reflex, and the reflex is created around you know the speed that comes with that. And 
we'll get into some you know rattles versus non rattles later but there there's all there are also some byproducts when you get into the rattling versions versus the non rattling versions which is another video down there but i'm going to say for the most part i don't care if you're fishing points if you're fishing around you know riprap grass beds just open water flats that medium fast stop and go retrieve is the way to go so the next retrieve i'll use on it is a slow roll and this is normally in if the water's a little bit cooler in the you know early pre-spawn or if i'm uh, fishing it really deep you know in the summertime which i do sometimes on lakes that have current on it but most of the time it's an early pre-spawn deal when that water temperature is under 50 degrees i'll basically throw it out there you know doesn't matter if i'm fishing a grass better point let it hit the bottom and then just slow roll it back and i want to try to keep it up off the bottom maybe uh you know a foot or so i'm not you know maybe stop and go a little bit but most of the time just sort of just slow rolling it like you would a spinner bait you know trying to keep it close to the bottom that works really good um, like i said if those water temperatures are below 50 degrees the third thing that i use on there and this is one of the my favorite ways to fish a you know any type of a lipless five bait and crankbait is by yo-yo in the bait and it's sort of similar to the way I'm slow rolling, except I'll throw it out there, you know, again, on whatever structure that I'm fishing. My favorite way to fish a yo-yo type uh, lipless crankbait is like on a big flat, you know, an area that I have to cover a lot of water. There could be grass on it, there could be rock on it, sand, whatever like that. But anytime these fish that I feel are on big flats or flat points, I'll throw it out there let it hit the bottom and it'll just sweep my rod up just like that. Just pump it up off the bottom, let it fall down. Just pump it up like that. About 75% of the time they hit it as you jerk it up, they're just there. And the other 25% of the time, dang motorcycles around here. And the other 25% of the time, you'll just see your line jump as it's falling back down. So the yo-yo is a real effective way to do it. And the fourth way that I do it, um, which is probably uh, doesn't get fished very much, is I like to fish a lipless crankbait in really clear water if you have a hard wind. Like this one of the best ways to catch big ones is if you've got like a, one of those days that's blowing 25 or 30 out there. Um, normally I like it in clear water again when I think those fish are gonna be capitalizing on coming up on wind blowing banks and points. And I'll throw that lipless crankbait out there I'll put it on like a, a long rod, like a flipping stick type rod or a seven and a half foot rod. I'll keep my rod hit tip high in the air and I try to keep that bait high in the water column and then just burn it almost as fast as I can. And what, what I'm wanting to do is I want those fish to come up on that bait. And when you have a windy, like low light condition with a lot of wind, burning that rattle trap, keeping it high in the water column is a, is a great way to catch it. So anyway, just a quick review guys, the, the main retrieves I use on it is a fast stop and go retrieve half the time that I use that. And the other 50% of the time, it's a mix between slow rolling them close to the bottom, you know, just pumping them up off the bottom and trying to keep them high in the water column, reeling them real fast. So usually that covers about every single one of them like that there's there's a couple of things you can tweak under certain conditions but that those four will cover you pretty good on there so we'll get into more of this later man we'll do you know rattlers versus non-rattlers different size profiles from the time of the year um colors all that type of stuff there's a lot to it down the road so anyway this is just a start to it so hope you guys enjoy the tip again if you like the video, hit that like button, hit the subscribe, and we'll be back soon with another one. See ya.